This is All India Radio, Bangalore. Today we bring you the concluding talk by Mr. Putin Joseph on journalism in the post-independence period, a talk in the series, The Story of Journalism in India. In his first conference as Prime Minister, Jawaharlal Nehru spoke in Hindi. No doubt symbolically of the future medium of all India in recourse. But on account of his defective knowledge of the language, he hastened to address the big audience in English. Mahatma Gandhi retreated to the background, his mission in the freedom struggle having been fulfilled. Newspapers, new and old, swung into action to reflect policies of post-war independence era in which we at present live. Nehru's motto about modernization could be given in his own words. We must hurry on because we have no time to lose. The objective of coming abreast of countries with an earlier start got into the atmosphere. The pursuit of peace halted in the arms race so that disarmament could be achieved early. The search for a more civilized life since in the words of C. Radhagopalachari in his obituary, he was a highly civilized man and we are not all civilized yet. More journals of multifarious type and of multilateral interests have come to the fore. In Hickey's time, all contemporaries had time to read a copy many times over, but today in India, it is difficult, except for the old guard, to glance through the columns of more than 20 papers a day. The jest about newspapers being declared as dry goods at the customs office has become real. Immense money is poured into the country, and quite a lot goes out in the shape of propaganda. Only a few days ago, an Urdu weekly saw the light of day in Manchester. Chinese handouts under bomb embassy auspices used to be freely available in spite of hostile comments. Cultural missions could be as sinister in effect as secret gun running, and all the pamphlets unloaded as on passengers not as tourist literature have their impacts. The safety of the world, like security in the democratic order, lies in knowing one another. Not in law, but in convention, come aids to the exchange of ideas across the thin barriers of censorship. I understand that it is open to me to import newspapers worth 150 rupees per year from Pakistan by exchange authorities, as against the reciprocal allowance to the effect of 150 rupees per year. Possibly the cause of amity could be better served by an accord to the effect that all papers produced in Pakistan should be exported for reading, reading by Indian citizens in return for facilities for the practice of Pakistanis studying the columns of our output of mechani mechanized production. It will foster a reorientation of outlook. To know all is to forgive all. There is a staggering increase of technological journals, and in New Delhi, the methods and organizational division of the Planning Commission foresee specialized papers to improve management cadre through instructive periodicals. Staff journals or house organs for private circulation only might suggest publication at a loss, whereas the whole category through goodwill and sometimes advertisement pressed on them by tradespeople registers individual and quite often intangible profits. At any rate, without loss, like a community of dobies living on each other's washing, the appearance of industrial townships pioneered by foreign experts be it Bilai or Niveli, induces mushroom growth of journals in local languages. A trend half political, half cultural is for state languages, or better still, 
regional languages to cater indirectly to communalism. But the latest report of the press registrar is that English papers retained paramountcy in circulation and leadership as compared with any other overall aggregate, including the Malayala Manorama, which has moved ahead to well over a lack of copies under the traditional momentum of high literacy in Kerala. In my view, investment in the English press is the best risk going in the trade. As for journals of ideological partnership, hanging on controversy about foreign subsidies and in the case of Russia versus China, well, they are not likely to grip vast masses of a country still low down in the scale of education. Let us educate the masses and that will be an equivalent of the sound democratic war cry. Let us educate our masters. Last, and lest we forget, the steady growth of cartoons in papers has been a feature throughout the three periods under study. It is part of journalism and an issue of the paper usually carries three pictures besides the kiddies corner strip. Firstly, there is the single column panel in the front page ridiculing the local weather linked with the soaring prices of commodities in the bazaar. Inside, there is the formal caricature of the day generally covering three columns. First class artists are engaged on the syndicate system whereby several journals are copyrighted and advantages accrue both for the proprietor and the contributor. Jawaharlal's Nehru's favorite cartoonist was Shankar, Chacha Nehru being a favorite of children and Shankar himself holding international children's exhibitions. The purport of the cartoon must be in harmony with major policies of the paper. Lord Biverbrook, however, gave permission to his cartoonists like Lowe and Vicky to publish jokes at his own expense, a device that popular, popularized the Bivel group of London papers. It was an act of high salesmanship plus a commercial display of freedom of the press. It was only after the birth of independence that journalism moved towards building a status of academic distinction. Schools of journalism made its appearance and qualified professors taught their art as in the Nagpur University. Several Americans have been of aid in this line. The Mysore University endowed a chair and for the first time in Indian history, a thesis was accepted for the conference of a doctorate, Dr. Krishnamurti Nadia took advantage of a traveling scholarship, realizing that while history may be bunk, as Henry Ford said, geography of the old world, emerging from the era of imperialism, was of incalculable importance for the production of sensible articles. Now, I have told my story. So, goodbye. You are listening to a talk by Mr. Prothen Joseph on journalism in the post-independence period. The concluding talk in the series, The Story of Journalism in India. This broadcast came to you from All India Radio, Bangalore.